Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. In today's video, we're going to talk about obviously the latest breaking news that uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is leading the race and is the preferred bid, preferred offer on the table right now by the Glazers, even if there's not a, an official announcement of a preferred bidder at this point. This is something we've been expecting to be coming for quite a while, so let's get into it and talk about the specific news. Um, so based on this reports, this is obviously coming out from pretty much everywhere now, which means it has finally somewhat been briefed, uh, starting with the Times, Matt Lawson and Matt Lawton and Dickinson at the Times, saying Jim Ratcliffe closing in on Manchester United takeover, latest in a long-running saga. Sir Jim Ratcliffe has moved a significant step closer to securing Manchester United with the Glazers and the New York Bankers, ready to discuss details of a sale with the British petrochemicals billionaire. Sources close to the deal have indicated the Glazers and Rain Group are now willing to enter final talks with Ratcliffe and his team at Ineos to thrash out the world record deal. Um, <clears throat> it says there's been minimal contact between Rain and the Qataris since those third and final offers were submitted last month, with the Ratcliffe bid understood to be the one favored by the six Glazer siblings. Here's an interesting thing that nobody has picked up on yet. Known to have seriously undermined the Qatar bid is the collapse of Credit Suisse in March, which is understood to have cost Qatar's investment authority billions as the second biggest shareholder and not helped the case of Sheikh Jassim, the bid leader, who had close links to the failed Swiss bank. Some people aren't going to like to hear that, but essentially through this recent economic crisis, Sheikh Jassim uh, has strong links to this credit Suisse, which is part of the this uh, this bank in Switzerland, that uh, essentially collapsed and was mismanaged entirely, and was something that Qatar's investment had huge ties to. And it is interesting that this has been highlighted by Times. Um, I don't know exact. I don't have the ins and outs, but that is seems to be a fairly significant statement that they're making there. Regardless, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bid has been confirmed at this point. Both of his offers are for a higher amount than what Qatar offering. One offer being to take over the entirety of the Glazer siblings, buy all of them. Um, the second offer to be just for buying the four siblings out and owning 51% and paying a premium on that. Both offers value the club at a higher price than Qatar's per the last reports that have come out there. Um, so that is really what has transpired now. As of now, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bids are higher, and it looks like the one that allows the Glazers to stick around for three years before there are buyouts in there. The two Glazer siblings will likely be the one that they are moving forward with in discussions. Now, what I want to talk about here on this is some of the bullshit that's been around this entire time. I said on Monday that they had been discussing and that at least one party was expecting feedback and talks by Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday, I said they've had those talks and discussions. And on Wednesday night, Martin Lipton from The Sun, who broke this story first in the journal, in the journalists, among the journalists, uh, stated that Jeremy Ratcliffe was the preferred bid at the moment from the Glazers. He's the one who said that. The next day, you had journalists like Ben Jacobs, who have said there's no feedback yet. They haven't had contact or anything like that. They were all wrong. And the problem that I've had throughout this process is these people who are reporting on it cannot differentiate between the PR that they have been fed by buying parties, usually on Qatar's side for people like Keegan, Ben Jacobs, etc., and the facts of the deal itself and what is going on. I know for a fact that Ineos were in regular contact with Rain the entirety of the last two weeks, that they had talks on Monday, they had talks on Tuesday, and they expected that they were closer to the deal than anybody else as of the beginning of the week. And I shared with this uh, the details of this with a number of people. And I stated on this video that things, that I couldn't give those details out, but that these talks had occurred and that these talks had been happening. The articles go on to state that Qatar have had minimal contact over the last few weeks since their bid. That is the fact of it. That's why it's been quiet. That's why these reports have not been coming out. It comes from Qatar's side when a lot of these journalists speak, and that doesn't mean they know the ins and outs of the deals. And the problem I've always had with this level of reporting is that 
it misrepresents what is actually going on. And I don't think that that is the right way to do this. You don't just report what someone says. This was the same situation when they said all those bids are in um, and then they weren't. You have to go off of checking things out with multiple sources. Another example, um, when Sir Jim made his initial bid that might have included the Glazer staying on, it was immediately reported without all of the details about the buyout for three years later. That was put out again through Qatar's side putting that out there to make Sir Jim's bid look worse than it was. Then it came out from Duncan Castles, and then eventually Mark Kleiman and others that he actually had these put-and-call options in there to buy out the Glazers, the rest of the Glazer siblings within three years. That was always in there. That was always a part of the bid. It was misrepresented. It was just thrown out there by someone without actually double-checking on all sides of the bid. Point being... Um, this isn't today's development, and that's the reason why this is significant. It is not today's development. That is what one has to think with. This has been the case all week. Enios or people at Enios, and people within or around this deal who have not been speaking to a lot of people, obviously, have known all week that talks have been occurring between those parties and that Enios at the moment was the preferred bid by the Glazers. And so that's been all week. They've already been talking about it. They're likely now to be hashing out the final details before saying that a bid is accepted. And that is the significance of the timing. This is not a new thing. Just remember, none of them knew it. And that's why it is unreliable to have anybody right now who just comes out with statements to believe the details of what they say at the moment. They didn't know. So they'll start to pull it back and say this and that. They don't know. They didn't know about all these talks ongoing. Those talks were ongoing. So be careful who you listen to. There are people who report things well. I find that the Times tend to be the most accurate on this, as well as Climate at Sky and a few others. But I expect things to come from unusual places because those are the people getting the real scoops and not necessarily just what is briefed to them. And that's just important to think with. As you know a lot on this channel, I talk about not just giving my own news and information, but properly evaluating the news that's out there and being able to determine what's going on because otherwise you set yourself up for a lot of disappointment. And I never say, hey, believe me over every journalist under the sun or anything like that. What I say is this is my information. There's people out there I think you should listen to. And when news comes out, make sure you evaluate it properly. Um, most of the time, I agree with a lot of what comes out there from journalists, and I don't argue with it in the slightest. But sometimes I know it's totally wrong, and sometimes I know there are people who are talking who do know what they're talking about, and those are the people to listen to, whether you like it or not. Um, so that's the reality of it, and the timing does matter. So the question is obviously, is it over? Um, and this is why I'm talking again about the timing. I'm put it to 95% at this point in time that the that Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bid is the one that happens. Um, his bid went in two weeks ago. We know it's been a long time. We've been waiting, right? The bids went in two weeks ago. Qatar knew about his bid. If they were going to improve upon it, they likely would have already. Um, the, the reason I brought up that point in the Times article was if the bid is being backed by some Qatari investment authority money that's being put into the 9-2 foundation and such, if there's a big black mark that lost them billions of, of dollars seen on Sheikh Jassim by people who run the Qatar investment authority, they may not trust him with this process. And I think that's what that article is indicating. Um, Anyway, I don't know. I can only speculate on that. But that's the first thing I've seen of someone actually mention that. And that is interesting. Regardless, they've known about Sir Jim's bid for two weeks. All week, they've been in discussions with Ineos about this bid. It seems unlikely that now someone's going to come in and make a better bid. Because why now? Why not before? It's not like this would have been the first Qatar hearing about it. They're not sitting there on Twitter waiting for latest news from Mike Keegan you know, um, or any journalist. I'm not calling someone out in particular. They're not waiting for people to come out with that news. They know what's going on. They know to some degree what's going on, albeit they haven't had that much communication. But that should tell you what the, the simplicity of it is. Um, 
that's the situation. That's where it's at. I don't think it's possible for them to beat this bid uh, at this point in time, or they likely would have done it already because they knew about this for weeks now, and they have not as of yet. Um, usually when it's moving into a process like this at this kind of stage where they're talking about this is the preferred option, things like that, and hashing out the details, unless in those discussions with Sir Jim Ratcliffe things, the details go wrong, then they would pull back and say, you know, discussions have broken down and it's reopened for more bids and things like that, then it's likely just to move forward into that. Because, you know, what is next here, it's been reported as well when those bids went in, is that they're not necessarily looking at a long drawn out process for the prefer, you know, for exclusive talks and things like that. But when they move into the next phase, move straight into the takeover, because it's gonna take a month for those owners and directors tests and a lot of the due diligences that have to get done before Sir Jim or whoever buys the club can actually take control of things. And so the next stage is not expected to take a long time. So it's sort of happening now. So when you see the preferred bidder announcement, it's probably more like bid has been accepted and they're working through the exclusivity details, due diligences, and submitting to owners and directors tests. That's probably more how it's going to be announced, I think. Um, but hopefully I'll have an update. On, uh, on Monday on something like that. But um, I, I, the way I see it is it's all a little bit behind. I think that they've been discussing the details of the bid. Come next week, they'll discuss accepting the bid is the most likely timeline of things. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's going to be, I, you know, obviously there's a lot of opinions about all of this. A lot of people are very upset about this situation. Um, and... You know, it is what it is. Like I say on Twitter, the only person you have to blame for Qatar not following through on this are Qatar. And that's the simple fact of it. So many times when you get into negotiations, you pay the asking price. We've talked about this with player sales for years and years. Pay the asking price. Just pay it. And if you're going to go in and brief, here's the, the, the logical connection that I think people are not getting and the concern that I have with the whole thing. If, you pl if you're saying all these reports that you're going to blow everybody out of the water, if you're going to pledge billions of dollars to the stadium, billions of dollars to the city, billions of dollars for transfers on all the promises that are being made, why can't you come in with a better bid? That third bid, they didn't even improve it per the reports. They just bid the same thing again or about the same, but with a pledge. Why can't you bid more money to win it if you're going to be willing to spend all this money on top of it? You have the money. It doesn't really add up. The whole thing doesn't totally add up. And at the end of the day, from the beginning, Glazers were asking for six billion, between five and six, depending on who you have. Uh, Sir Jim's offer is the still the best. Even then, take this whole fifty percent thing out. Sir Jim's final offer for the club was more than Qatar's. What are you gonna do? So, as I said a few weeks ago, the way I saw it was it was either Jim's offer or nobody, because he had the best offer in both respects. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, it needs to get resolved. There's still a lot of drama within the club about this, and it needs to get resolved now very fast so things can move forward. But, um, you know, that's the simplicity of the situation. That's everything that's going on. Uh, leave me your, your feedback below. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on. I'll see you in the next one.